What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Carver Outdoors. Guys, we've got something a little bit different today. It's a new series I like to call Tailgate Talk. It's going to be an awesome way for you to find awesome new channels and probably a really good way for me and you to get a little bit better at fishing, learning some new techniques. Stay tuned and enjoy. <music> Alright guys, welcome back to Carver Outdoors. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you've always been here, I appreciate you coming back. As always, hit that like button. And if you're new, and if you like it, subscribe for future contents. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this. This is a new series I like to call Tailgate Talk. And this is a way where we're going to be able to find some awesome new channels, learn a little bit about their channels, learn a little bit about their strategies to fishing, and what's been working for them this year. Alright, so... Without further ado, this week's guest, good friend of mine that I was able to meet through YouTube, but he's an awesome guy and he's got a great young channel, Tom Kelly Outdoors. Guys, so let's just jump right in. I've got a few questions for him. First question to Tom Kelly, what's your channel all about? Hello YouTube, Tom Kelly Outdoors here. A buddy of mine from Carver Outdoors sent me a few questions he'd like me to answer. I'll try to answer them the best of my ability and see what you all think. Okay, his first question is, what is your channel all about? Well, my channel's not going to be about one certain thing. It's going to be mainly about fishing. I do a lot of bass fishing, just now getting into cat fishing, and I also just got into kayak fishing, which I love too, and I'll post a lot of videos about that. And I, a lot, of, a lot of bass fishing videos on my bass boat. And I'm also a professional commercial flooring installer by trade. So I'll have a lot of videos of some of my jobs on there. And I do a lot of carpentry work too. So I, I'll have some videos on there working on the lake house as they become available. I work on the house in my spare time. So I'll post a few videos about that too. And... That's about it, but mainly, like I said, it's gonna be a lot of outdoor stuff, fishing. That's great, Tom, sounds awesome, guys. He's got a great young channel with some really good videos, and he's got a lot of future content that he's thinking about, so I'm excited, and so should you. Question number two, Tom, have you been able to fish a whole lot this year? And if so, how's it been going for you? Well, no, unfortunately, no, I have not been able to fish much because of work. But actually, that's a good thing because the fishing this year has been terrible, especially this summer. Reason being, our water is still, our lake water level is still up about 10 feet above summer pool, which is real bad. I mean, the water is very murky. Fishing is real tough. Been out a few times bass fishing, caught a few small ones, but nothing like it should be. So I'm praying that come this fall, it's gonna be a lot better, and I, I know it will be. Well, dang, Tom, I hate to hear that, but I know your pain. Where I'm at here in Middle Tennessee, on the, on the Old Hickory where I fish, a lot of times they, they, they pull the water so much. If you can go there one day and it'd be fine. The next, it could be five feet shallower and then it could next day could be 10 feet deeper like they're constantly pulling the water and that has a horrible effect on fishing so a lot of times if i see the water pulled real down i just take my pole right back and go back because i know it's not going to be that good of luck so i know you're paying there question number three tom what's your number one tip for someone who's just now getting into fishing my number one tip for a beginner Go, go to a small lake, pond that you know that has some bluegill in it. Get yourself a nice light action pole with some four pound, six pound line on it. Simple hook, float set up with some red worms. You're guaranteed to catch some bluegill and it's gonna keep you interested. You're not gonna lose interest if, because you're not catching fish. In my opinion, bluegill is the easiest fish to catch. So that's what I would do. I would keep it simple like that. Go to a lake, catch you some bluegill. That's the easiest tip I can give you right there. 
All right, great. That was a great tip, Tom. And I, I mean, I agree with it 100%, guys. You can't go wrong with just getting you some light action line and uh, bobber, some some red worms. Just cast it out there, sit, and just find you a place that you know there's going to be a lot of bluegill there, and just just have fun with it. And the biggest thing I would say to that is just and when you advance and you try to start becoming more into bass fishing, catfishing, whatever it is, is you can't be discouraged. All right. Uh, Fishing, there's a reason why they call it, the old saying is the reason why they call it fishing and not catching because you're not going to go and catch them every single day. And I know that it, it has been a struggle for me this year um, when I've been able to have the time to go and um, just haven't had the luck like I've had in years past or haven't had the luck that I've wanted to, but you just got to keep going because that's, that's the only way you're going to be able to have those really good days and catch those big fish is by just continuing to go. So yeah, great tip. Get you some worms, bobber, go out there, or crickets, and just have fun catching catching any fish that will bite. Because here's the thing, about those red worms, big old bass could come also. And before you know it, you got a good fight on your hands. So that's a good tip. All right, question number four, Tom. What's your go-to lure when the bite is tough and you just, you're, you're struggling to get anything going? What's your go-to lure that gives you the most confidence of catching that bass? My go-to lure. Okay, my number one go-to lure for catching bass, it's always worked for me, is this simple plastic grub right here. White, I have a couple of them. I have one with the two tails on it, and then I have another, you know, simple one with the one tail, the white. And also I'll use some uh, chartreuse yellow. They catch more bass for me than anything I've ever used. I have a couple other crankbaits that I use that I catch a lot of bass with also. One of them dives a little deeper than the other one. And another one that I recently started using catches some big bass is the six inch Zoom Lizard. Caught a lot of bass with this also. Real easy to work, flip. And that's about it. Oh, also, I have another one that I use too. Caught, caught a few bass with it. Is the Dragonfly. It's a nice one also. Now, if I'm crappie fishing, my number one lures for that is the Bobby Garland Shads. I love those. You can get them at Walmart. I use the Monkey Milk. The water's kind of murky. I'll use the uh, electric chicken and the red and chartreuse. They work really good. And that's about it for my for my favorite lures. Thanks a lot. All right, Tom, those are some good lures right there. I have to say, I, those one-tail grubs and two-tail grubs, I, I've never really used those. If I have, I've done it when I was a kid and uh, and they do look like they'd be some money baits. Of course, the crankbaits, I've, uh, I've gotten into some of those and had some luck. And of course, the, the plastic lizard, I've done pretty good on in years past on that. But the, the grubs, I'm, you know, something that simple, you kind of overlook. And it's something that, you know, you have to constantly remind yourself, look, when, when the bike gets tough, just throw one of these on and you should be able to have some luck. So that's good to know. And I think I'm gonna try to give that back a, another try. Also, with your crappie baits, 100% agree. We've, we've fished a lot of baits just like that, and man, when the crappie bites on, you're gonna catch them that way. So 100% agree with that one. Tom Kelly, thank you for being a part of Tailgate Talk, the first edition of hopefully many more. And as always, guys, go check out his videos. Give him some support. Hit that smash button. You know what I'm talking about, the like button. And if you're not subscribed to Tom Kelly Outdoors, you might want to go over there right now. I've got it in the top corner of the screen, got it in the description. Hit that bell and become a part of that family because he's got a lot of really good content coming in the future. But as always, guys, also, if you want to be a part of Tailgate Talk, put in the comment section below that you would love to have a chance to be able to be on here and let's talk some fishing because I'm excited. I want to be able to do a lot more of this. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching Carver Outdoors. As always, smash the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Have a good day. God bless. Wet a line. And go fishing.